all right what is going on youtube it's your boy king red diamonds and i'm back again for another neo 2 video um today i will be doing a dual sword build um dual swords is actually a really fun a really fun weapon um i these were actually some of the first weapons i used my first two weapons that i chose in the game when i started were the switchglaive and the dual swords uh, the dual swords are the ma the weapon I had. I probably got to max familiarity, uh, max um, skill the fastest, um, because I just I enjoyed the gameplay that it came with. So I am bringing those back. Um, as you can see, I am using the Master Swordsman's power, which is the dual sword set, um, using the plus set of course, um, the, which comes in um, pretty much the Dream of the Neo and. Um, underworld stuff so whenever you get to this diff difficulty you'll get the plus sets of already um, in the game gear pretty much so um, I, I'm using a plus set basically just to take advantage of the mystic sword, the mystic dyad dual swords uh, so I can get two mystic arts on my dual sword because the dual sword mystic arts are very very good um, as you can see it comes with sign of the cross damage which I'm going to be taking advantage of with this build because I'm pairing the master swordsman power with the grace of Fusanushi now, Fusanushi, if you do not know, is the sheath active skill grace, meaning that anytime your weapon is in its sheath and you like quick draw it or whatever, decide to cross it or pretty much anything that comes from your weapon being sheathed, that's what this build, that's what this grace is for. So the six piece Fusanushi, uh, seven piece Fusanushi with the six piece uh, Master Swordsman's power um, pretty much comes out to make a pretty devastating build, in my opinion. Um, Dual Swords is already really good in general, so pairing it with the Fusanushi's Grace is really, really good. Um, of course, I picked the random gear that I can get my get the Graces on and stuff like that. It can be better, so um, that's why I'm running uh, the Lucky Drop effects on my accessories. Um, as you can see, I, I'm not using the Asakani because I have Star Effect set bonus requirements reduced minus one on this writing set, so I don't need a Yasakani. Um, but yeah, I'm running the Lucky Drop Equip Weapon and Lucky Drop Equip Armor on these so I can, you know, get better rolls and stuff for maybe min-maxing this more so than it already is. Um, scroll I'm running is an Ultimate Courage scroll. I haven't finished pretty much doing this scroll and re-rolling the, the stats on it, but I will. Um, but as it is right now, it's a pretty good scroll. Um, if I did, if I needed to put Ultimate Stamina up, then I could have that, but I don't really need Ultimate Stamina. Um... What else? Uh, my magic, um, standard magic, pretty much. I'm running barrier for the uh, key recovery speed and the yokai pool uh, purification, rejuvenation for life regen, steel for defense, of course. Um, this actually is very, very good for this build. Extraction is going to come in handy for this build, mainly because of the um, effect I have on my scroll of the dam, which I'll go back over. Um, Arch yokai for anima gain, of course. Lightning familiar, of course, because I want to get. Um, confusion up on my enemy as fast as possible plus lightning is a discount sloth so that works out perfectly and then my basic um, speed running ninjutsu and stuff like that but um, going back to my extraction talisman now if you did not know extraction talisman allows you to attack the enemy and pretty much steal and rid of from them okay that helps with my life recovery on a rid absorption which is here when I rest it restores health when I absorb and rid of now this skill path of the ravenous this greatly recovers my health whenever i absorb Emrita, but in exchange i earn less Emrita, right that effect is counteracted by extraction me using extraction makes me take more Emrita from an enemy meaning that every time i attack an enemy i'm going to gain Emrita from them regardless because my extraction is active that's going to counteract the negative effect of Path of the Ravenous, meaning that I, it says that I lose, I basically get decreased in Ritter gain. With extraction, I'm going to get more, and I gain more health back because of Path of the Ravenous. So I don't need to have um, life recovery on a Ritter absorption on both of my accessories. All I needed on is this right here, and I'm going to gain back a ridiculous amount of health, meaning that I most likely will not die. Now. If you did not know what I talked about earlier with the um, Mystic Dyad Dual Swords, when you have Mystic Dyad for a weapon, it allows you to use 
both mystic arts at the same time with the dual sword these two mystic arts are OP okay firm resolve basically if I keep on attacking I get a defense I get basically um, a defense buff an attack and defense buff basically so I basically literally do not take damage at all like if I keep on attacking I take no damage like if I say I'm attacking and I get hit in the middle of a combo, it'll tickle. Like it, I take no damage with firm resolve. Firm resolve active. With the Mystic Sword Dual Sword Diet, I get to also use momentum. Now momentum basically lowers the key usage when I'm attacking. So basically, the more I attack, the less key I use. And that's adding on to the fact that I'm not taking damage while I attack. If we come over here to my stats, you can see I have 358 toughness. That is a lot. That means that I'm pretty much going to be tanking anything. This build in, its, in essence is a tanking build. So you can literally just keep attacking and not worry about dying because you're going to be pretty much healing yourself back and you're going to be like dealing out massive amount of massive amount of damage so it's a really good build for people who you know don't want to worry about dodging all the time or don't want to worry about defending and just want to pressure your um enemies it's very very good very solid build um well so while we're here i'll go over my stats uh, my constitution is at 197 just because um, i'm trying to put it up to 200 so i can have the maximum amount of health i can get um Heart and Courage at 200 because that's what my dual sword scale with. I'll go back to that to show you. I have Transform Bonus Courage on them. And they already have Heart as in another pretty much innate um, stat on them anyway. So Courage and Heart, they're scaled with. Uh, my Stamina is at 40 just to meet the requirements to BNB Agility. Uh, because you can see I have 358 Toughness. Meaning that I will need a lot of Stamina in order to run this build. Because it's it working with mainly Heavy Armor. Um, strength is at 10 for soft cap, skills at 10 for soft cap, dexterity is at 30 just to meet the capacity cap for ninjutsu, and magic is the same at 30 to meet the magic capacity cap. Um, as for the guardian spirit, I'm bringing back Izanagami. Izanagami is the water guardian spirit, if you do not know, because it comes with melee damage versus saturated enemy. Um, I have my Gyuki on there, the Gozuki, and the Lesso Mibozo. Um, I'll go to those for you just so you can see them. Uh, my Gyuki comes with melee versus saturated, so that's really good for water-based builds. Um, this comes with animal bonus on saturated enemy, so the more saturated the enemy is, the more animal I'll gain. Plus, this is for um, a massive amount of key damage. Gozuki does a massive amount of key damage. Um, and Lesson Bozo is just to get water saturation up on the enemy if I need to. Um, and it comes with animal bonus saturation. So basically, I'll be able to just um, get animal back as quickly as possible. Added that on to Arch Yokai, Anima almost instantly, and just like infinite Anima. It's going to be great. Um, if you did not know, like I said, I'm wanting water as the element on my swords. Um, so, because our water basically is the de the natural defense debuffer. So that's why I'm running water. Um, other than that, you can run any element you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, I just chose water because of defense debuff and I'll probably do I'll most likely do increased damage whenever I like basically get the enemy saturated and stuff like that. But um that's pretty much the build. It's not done, but uh, like I said it, it takes a long time to pretty much grind Underworld. Um if you guys have been waiting for more videos to come out, I'm sorry. It it does take a long time to grind Underworld. Uh, most of my materials are gone because I'm making so many builds and I'm trying to put together so much stuff just to bring keep coming content coming out for you guys so if you bear with me I, I appreciate you guys for sticking around and stuff so um i hope you guys enjoy this build i ask that you like comment and subscribe before we get into gameplay i'm getting close to 100 subscribers and i i can't thank you guys enough it's it's so surreal because i really i recently started doing youtube and it's really it's really been fun i really appreciate it i really appreciate the support i appreciate the feedback i appreciate you guys talking to me i appreciate you guys just you know watching my videos and enjoying them so i hope you guys can stick around and continue to enjoy my videos i'll try my best to keep on getting content and brought out to you guys as quickly as i possibly can um i just want to say thank you thank you so much but we're going to get right into the gameplay and i will see you guys then
a stage you know what stage it is and if you don't know and you're new to my videos this stage is the refined man of the underworld it's the best place to to, to ch test out any builds you do it's the best place it's pretty much like a yokai gauntlet if you will you'll come here fight a bunch of yokai and just put your build to the test so i'm gonna hop right into it Let's go. Bring it. Jeez, look how much damage that did. That does. Look at that sign of the cross. Yeah, that's what we like. Shit, with this build, I didn't even need to throw out a sign of the cross. I was doing enough damage just with the uh, the spinning dragon. That that was ridiculous. Like I literally shredded his health. But um, that's just the potential of the build. It can do that much damage. Um, you don't really need to use sign of the cross. You can use any type of skill. It does not matter. This build is going to do ridiculous amounts of damage anyway. So um, we're just going to hop into the next event. All right, guys. I decided to come into the underworld uh, just to see how this build does here. I know a lot of people just like see my build videos and they wonder like, okay, well, it does good in like regular content. But how does it do in the underworld, which is pretty much in-game content? So I decided to bring it here. So let's see what we do. Done. that's how well it does in underworld shooting doji is not by any means a weak yokai but if you put enough pressure on him with the dual swords you'll definitely get him done but um i guess i can give you guys another one until we wrap back in a mission um I decided I'm just do this whole mission because it's pretty short. It's pretty short. We're gonna take on Imagawa. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna run through this really fast and get to the boss.
Okay. I missed. Got him that time. Okay. Go with this. This. Let me get this guy over here. All right. Let me take him down. And I did change to Water Familiar because Imagawa is pretty much a lightning enemy and he's resistant to lightning, so really there'd be no point in having lightning. But um, let's do it. That's how well dual swords does against human enemies. If you can pressure a human enemy with the dual swords, you'll destroy them. It won't even be fair. Um, that's what this that's what the dual swords pretty much is for. Pressure. You're supposed to pressure your enemy when using a dual sword build. That's what it's built for. So as long as you're putting pressure on your enemy, you'll literally destroy them and kill them in no time. But it will go to the next one. And we're going to take on Winds of Ruin, which is pretty much the um, human enemy gauntlet. So uh, let's see how well our dual swords do against these guys. him out the way. He's probably the tankiest boss. out of there right he's done Come. 
Show me what you got. So, not bad, actually, you know? Uh, Bill's pretty powerful to me. Pretty much, like, cutting off half their health with one side of the cross. So, um, I think this build did pretty well. Of course, it's not as powerful as other builds, but the dual swords aren't meant for deal damage dealing. Dual swords are pretty much combo doers. Uh, the damage dealers are, like, the single sword and... Um, and the fists and switch blade, those are the huge damage dealers. But the swords, the dual swords, they're mainly for like pretty much putting status debuffs on people and and just dealing out combos. But for this to be very late game, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really upset about that. I think it played pretty well. But um, if you guys enjoyed the video, again, like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you for stopping by. And, and, I, and trust me, I have more videos on the way. So please be patient with me. I thank you guys for the support. Um, I appreciate you sticking with me and, you know, coming by my page. But um, I'll see you guys in the next one. King Red Diamonds out.